My name is Eric Wielander and welcome back to my channel all about apps and gear in the Apple ecosystem. Now today we're going to talk about how to play games that are for Microsoft Windows on your Mac using Boot Camp. For many of you out there, there are probably some games that bring back good memories from childhood. I'd love to hear about those in the comments below, games you loved growing up. Personally, for me, one of those was Age of Empires II, The Age of Kings. I'm not really a huge gamer myself, but some of those strategy games like that, uh, RTS games, uh, I really enjoyed those. But I kind of live under a rock uh, in, the, in the gaming world, and I just uh, don't really pay attention to the news. And a couple weekends ago, I found out that they They'd made a Age of Empires definitive edition um, that's an exclusive to the Windows Store that you can play on PC. And I really wanted to try that out, but I obviously didn't want to go out and buy a Windows machine or buy all the parts and build a Windows machine just to play this game. Um, so I started thinking about what I have and what I could do. Uh, I personally have one of the late 2012 Mac Minis. Um, for those of you who really follow all those details, it's one of the, of the few Mac Minis with an i7 processor in it. Um, and I use that as a build server. So as an app developer, I ship apps to the App Store, like Best Photos, and I use that build server to run tests and then um, package up the uh, app with Fastlane and ship it to the App Store. So, it had some free hard drive space on it, and I thought, why don't I partition it and use Boot Camp? Um, and Boot Camp was actually very easy, but there's a few supplies and a few things you need to consider up front before you go out and just start reformatting the, the hard drive on your Mac and um, installing Boot Camp. The first is, do you have enough hard drive space? That hard drive or uh, solid state drive on that uh, Mac was only about 25% full. Uh, Boot Camp will then be able to create a partition with all that free space without um, erasing or uh, damaging any of your Mac uh, files or, or operating system. You should, of course, always make a backup. Things don't always go as planned, but in theory, that's how it worked, and it worked great for me of just being able to partition the drive and then have half of the drive for Mac OS and half of the drive for Windows. The other thing is, if you're like me and you're trying to play a specific game, go out and double check the graphics requirements and the system requirements. Make sure that the Mac you're using, especially if it's an older Mac like the one I'm using, um, make sure it matches up with the specifications. This just barely met the minimum graphic requirements to play Age of Empires Definitive Edition, but it works fine. I'm, I don't need any kind of high frame rates or really detailed graphics. I just want to be able to play. The next thing you'll need is a copy of Microsoft Windows um, from, you can either download it from the Windows Store online, and then what I did is used a um, USB drive that I happen to have with me. It sounds like from reading around the internet, although this isn't what I personally did, you could also go to say a Microsoft Store and get Windows on a USB drive and that would also work. You should also plan to have a little bit of time where your Mac is just churning through all of this and going through the different install processes. You know, this is not something to start and think that it'll take like 30 minutes. It's probably going to take a few hours depending on the speed of your machine and a bunch of other variables, but just don't plan for it to happen instantly. So once you've downloaded your copy of Windows from the Microsoft Store and you have a USB drive plugged in, it has to be at least 16 gigabytes of size. Mine was 32. Um, and you just plug that into your Mac and then you launch the Boot Camp Setup Assistant in Mac OS and you show it where you have your Windows um, ISO on your drive and then it will do a bunch of work to basically turn that USB drive you attached. It'll erase it, format it, it and uh, turn it into a Windows install drive. And it does a bunch of other stuff, uh, walking you through partitioning your disk and deciding how much space you want to dedicate to Windows. I ended up going with about like 100 gigs for each, um, 100 something like 120 gigs for each Windows and Mac and that seems to be fine for me. But um, keep that in mind that you're not going to be able to put this on like a 5 or 10 gig slice of your hard drive. So then you go through um, all the steps, it will then restart your computer and it will kick off the Windows install process and uh, then it's a little confusing on there to figure out which drive, which partition you want to install Windows on because Windows needs to then format it again. But otherwise, after that, um, 
it pretty much just takes care of itself. It walks you through the process. It's really easy to follow the install instructions. Um, then once you have Windows all set up, in order to change between Windows or Mac OS, you simply reboot your computer and hold down the option key. And then as the computer boots up, it'll show you the two different drives you can boot from and you can choose which one you want, Mac or Windows. And these days with uh, solid state drives, machines boot up from nothing so quickly that it's really not as much of a drag as it was, say, when Apple first released Boot Camp back in the day. You might have heard of other tools like Parallels or VMware Fusion that allow you to run Windows inside of Mac OS and sort of run both at the same time. That's not really ideal if you want to be playing games because the games are probably going to want all of the system resources and you can't do that when you're running both at once. And then one other tip, if you happen to be doing this with one of Apple's Apple's um, wireless magic keyboards. Um, th they have a lightning port on the back, and if you use a lightning to USB cable, it allows that keyboard to function pretty much as a wired keyboard um, as opposed to Bluetooth, and I found that was way easier for Windows to pick up and understand um, than if I tried to set it up from the get-go uh, as Bluetooth. So um, keep that in mind as you're doing the install process. If that keyboard is giving you issues and you need to switch to a USB option, just use one of those USB to lightning cables and plug it in. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you aren't already. Leave a thumbs up for this video if you liked it. If you're excited about playing some PC games on your Mac uh, or just installing Windows, uh, let me know in the comments below uh, what games or apps you're really trying to use on Windows that's making you want to do that. Thanks again so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.